Sanjay Chetan, Sojo Chenam La, Chancho Pado, Dani Jackson, Dogi Jin Soji Vesonam Chin, Rola Pensar Sanjay and Rubashu, Sanjay Chetan, Sojo Chenam La, Chancho Pado, Dani Jackson, Dogi Jin Soji Vesonam Chin, Rola Pensar Sanjay and Rubashu, Sanjay Chetan, Sojo Chenam La, Chancho Pado Dani Jackson Chi, Dagi Jin So Ji Ve So Nam Chi, Drola Pensar Sanjay Nro Va Shio, Sinjie Tham Chi Dewa Tan Dewe Chi Da Dembar Chi, Dong Han Da Dong Han Ji Jo Tan Cha Va Chi, Dong Han Mi Pe Dewa Tan Min Cha Va Chi, Yeren Cha Tan De Cha Ve Dong Yim La Ne Bar Chi Chi. To je chimbo tang te pe, ta do xin je ten se chi, nan jo wang jo sa kya pa, gong ka nyin bo la cha cha, to je chimbo tang te pe, ta do xin je ten se chi, nan jo wang jo sa kya pa, gong ka nyin bo la cha cha, to je chimbo tang te pe, ta do xin je ten se chi, nan jo wang jo sa kya pa, gong ka nyin bo la cha cha, sa jo pe jo su jo me to tang, ra ling ki nye de jim ba, Sanjay Shinda Mide Pulwai, Roke Nanda Shinda Jyavashu. Good morning, everyone. So today I'm going to talk a very short biography of the Sajin Gwanyimbo, Tsewachima Sajin Gwanyimbo, which many of you know, he's the one of the main founder of the Sajjaba set. And we have a statue over there. Sajin Gwanyimbo statue, the founder of the Sajja set. And uh, uh, so he was born in uh, 1092 during the second Tibetan astrological cycle of the year water monkey, which is in, in a uh, Western calendar is 1092. And his father is Kuen Kuen Chodjawo, and his my mother is Maji Shama. And he was, um, he was born with, uh, under the many auspicious signs, including the music, natural music, and great uh, auspicious day. And he's, and then he was very fast learner and uh, fast to grow up. So, and everybody liked him very much. So his father, Kung Jajabu, gave him name is Kung uh, Nyingbo, which is, uh, I don't know exactly the, Mini, but it's Gunga Nimbo, I think it's joy's essence of all, something like that. The person named Gunga Nimbo, which means the well, the great benefit for the world, or something like that. So his name is Gunga Nimbo. So he was raised by his father, Kungon Chojabo, uh, Majishama, and uh, um, since he was very fast learner and uh, uh, grow fast, so uh, his father gave a teaching, uh, writing, reading, medicine, all kind of teaching, uh, plus the, also he gave the lots of initiations, protections, such a, and the many teachings Kungonja Jeva gave him. So, in, uh, uh, after receiving many teachings, after he was 11 years old, his father passed away. Kuen Kuen Jajawa passed away. And so then uh, his mother, Maji Shama, and uh, also the um, Pari Lozawa, who is also another teaching with connection with this uh, Kuen Kuen Jajawa. And he said, it's now you have to study hard. Your father is great master, Kuen Kuen Jajawa. So you have to study hard, and uh, um, you have to study something very special, uh, practice deity, which is the Lord of Wisdom, is Manjushri. So he, 
uh, listened to that, and he went his very strict retweet. And he went his strict retweet in the Arya Manjushir. And we have in the Sakyawis cave, there's a Manjushira cave. He went there and studied very intensive um, retreat. So within six months, and uh, Manjushira appeared in front of him above and giving the teaching. And this teaching is very, very famous, and especially such as it is mind training, is four line teaching. It's parting from four attachment, which is Sendila Shene Chuba Min, Kowale Shene Nganjo Min, Daudele Shene Changse Min, Zimba Chona Tawa Min, which is, means if you have attachment to the life, this life, you are not a religious person. If you have attachment uh, to the world of exist, you do not have renunciation. If you have attachment to your own purpose, you do not have uh, enlightenment mind. If you um, gasp, rise, you do not have a view. So this four-line teaching is mind training teaching in the Sakyaba, very famous. And many lamas, masters, not only Sakyaba said, but other lamas had a lots of commentaries of this. So the books and books are teaching mind, mind training teaching. And this is a very famous teaching they call uh, parting from for attachment. So, and after he finished his retreat, and he came out, completed his retreats, and then uh, his mother, Majishama, said, now you cannot uh, maintain, uh, take care of the monastery, you are still young yet, but you have to go further study. And um, so um, you have to give this um, taking care monastery to um, other uh, master lama who is strong connection, like I mentioned, is uh, Parilozawa, which is also connected with his uh, father, Kwenkuncho uh, Jabo. So they ask uh, Parilozawa to take over such a uh, monastery to teach and holding the, all the tradition. He became in a second such a tinsi, for he hold for um, eight years. So then um, he, um, they sent him to further study, and he, they sent him to so further study, which is the, um, not such as so, uh, elsewhere, who was the, the great lama, Geshe, I think Tatipa, and he is giving the Abhidhamma Kosha as well as many teachings. So the Sajangwanyimbo sent there when he was 12 years old. He sent there and receiving, and this teaching was very vast, very intensive teaching, and the, the place where they um, giving teaching, his accommodation was very poor, and uh, stay have to stay in the cave or elsewhere. So Sajjan Nimbo has a um, roommate, a monk, they stayed in the cave. So the Sajjan Nimbo's roommate monk uh, um, caught a smallpox, I think small, do not smallpox? Smallpox. Smallpox. And so um, the monk got that in his room, and so Sajjan Nimbo was very um, petty, so taking care of nursing him, took care, and he got smallpox. So was, and he was young, he was away from the home, he was very depressed, and then his mother heard that, and the mother came with a lot of things, and uh, um, so he was cried. So this is away from, I just cannot take in this so and his teaching was vast and too much. So mother see the round all the teaching and all the teachers, how mm, very intensive teaching, very precious teaching. And the mother said, you are son of the Chose, which is the Kwen um, You cannot leave, you sh should be strong and maintain and receive the teaching, you can't leave here. And she even said that, scolded him, 
and said that, I'd rather you die here or during the teaching than I don't regret and come home. So he stayed at the teaching. So he got better and the uh, teaching was completed. So then he came back in the Sakya and then still more teachings need to be done. So he found out and uh, there's um, uh, also, the, there's a teacher, as Gomi, who's uh, holding the um, Lamdi teaching. And the Lamdi teaching, this is the Lama Shankumbunga, I think, and he's teaching it. So he wanted to go and see him and then ask to give him a Lamdi teaching. So when he went, this Lama is very um, like ordinary, and he found the Lama was doing powling in the Wheel, uh, with the, in the field, and so just an ordinary man like. So he found out he's the one who's carrying the teaching, such a lamde. So he went there in the post station and said, please give me lamde teaching. And this lama first said the refuse, I, I'm nobody, I don't know. And then finally he realized this is the son of the Kuen Kuen Jiao. So he took him, so he started giving teaching. And the teaching was many summer and winter, many months. And all, all this teaching, Lamri teaching, was oral transmission. And nothing written, it's just all. And he's the only one who received the teaching, Lamri teaching. So then the Lama said, you have to study very hard this Lamri teaching and meditation, practice, all this once you penetrated, you're going to be the king of the Lamji. And, and he cannot give teaching others, cannot tell anybody for 18 years. So Sajin Munyimbo studied in the Sakya and uh, also Kau, and all he studied for 18 years is sacred. Nobody did not tell anybody. So the finally, after the 18 years, during the 18 years, he had lots of visions, and the deities came to give more teachings, explanation, and meditation, and he was quite bit um, uh, received many blessings and so forth. So after the 18 years teaching, and then um, uh, the Ananda Lama, I think uh, Lama, something who came and asked him to uh, give a teaching in the Lamde. So Sajin Munyimbo started giving teaching, and that time then he written down on all the explanation and translation, uh, as well as the commentary, and he gave a teaching. And this is the first time he gave the teaching, but he gave the many teachings on Lamde after that. And after that, he received all this time. Now he's quite became the famous, not only just the, um, Tibet, but uh, like China or Mongolia or so forth, all he became. And he was teaching. He became a very, very, um, how do you call it? Um, miracle things happened. So like he was giving teaching for six places at the same time. It's not on Satya, Kam, Lhasa, everywhere. And some lamas come in. I received this teaching, Lamdi teaching from Satya, Satya uh, Ngonyimbo. Oh, I received there too. I received like six places at the same time. That much power he had. So he gave the teachings. He received, um, and at the same time, he also um, invited a lot of other master teachers. and. Um, he came tremendously, and then he took back the Pari um, uh, you know, Sakya Tenzin. He's the third Sakya Tenzin in the Sakya Bar. So he was giving teaching all, uh, everywhere. And then, uh, you know, as usual, uh, places always, uh, the lots of uh, other religion quotes we call, or other religion masters, and didn't like because he became very famous. So there was Wulangana and Tinglana and Pena, as two person wanted to assassinate Sajin Munyibo. 
because he's going so famous. So they sent a Kamba man who's uh, volunteered, or not volunteered, he told the go uh, kill Sajin Gunyimbo. So this Kamba man came to Sajin Gunyimbo and did, you know, beginning prostration and saying that I I'm, have so much devotion and you are the great teacher. So I want to serve you and want to stay with you and uh, to personal servant and study with you. So Sajin Gunyimbo knew he, who he was, I'm sure, but he said, that's fine. So he stayed with Sajin Gunyimbo's home and serving all kinds of things around. And he see, he tried to find an opportunity when he's time to he assassinate. But then one day, Sajin Gunyimbo, Sajin Gunyimbo has, uh, Sajin Gunyimbo and his Dhamma has four sons. Uh, Gungomba, um, Sonam Tsemo, Traba Gyanse, and Bache Webo. He has four sons. But two of his sons, Sajin Gunyimbo, was sitting in his um, uh, room. And this is they call Dagam. This is what we call Dagam, kind of wearing this. So he had um, Sonam Tsemo here, Traba Gyanse this side, and they were joking and playing, just like father and son, and just all kind of. So this Kamba man, Doja, he saw that. He thought, oh, he's not great teacher, he's just like any of us ordinary men and playing his sons, nothing. This is, you know, he had bad thoughts. So right that time, Sajin Wanyimbu um, stretched out his two feet and all the, the space was the very musical and showed uh, Hei Vajra's mandrala and Chaka Sambar mandrala to the Kamba man. And the Kamba man almost fainted, and he, he apologized. He is not going to kill you. I am sent by the Nana and Pena, but I'm going to go back and kill them. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, I want to be your student for rest life. And uh, so my, he was apologized, all his negative thoughts. This kind of the, lots of medical things such when you were done. And these are the well knowing everybody tells this. So then, of course, Sajin uh, Gunyimbo was not killed. <laughs> and so anyway, so he studied, he became, and Sajin Gunyimbo is, as you know, he's a founder of the Satya Set. And uh, he served um, Satya Tinsing for 47 years. And, um, he has done tremendously uh, teaching and uh, benefit to the all over uh, Tibet, uh, mm, and well as the, all the given teachings, and uh, especially Satya Sat. And he's the main founder of the Satya. And Tsewa Chimbo Sajin which is we call Tsewa Chimbo, he has so much compassion. But this, before Sajin Munyimbo was born, many years before, um, many years before, um, Bama Sambawa, Ujin Rinpoche, uh, came to Tibet many years. And Bama Sambawa uh, prophecy left, says, Gunga Nyimbo Sajin Lozawa, so nam zemo chaba gyan se tang. Rizun gombi chuba chang to chun. Which means that he left prophecies, gunga nyimbo and so nam zemo chaba gyan se. These three named person will be in appeared uh, upper part of Tibet, Zhang, and going to be the emanation of the uh, three deities, which means Manjushir, um, uh, Jerezi and uh, uh, Bajapani. So this three, this is the prophecy left many years before. And right after that, and in uh, 100 years, a few hundred years before also, George Bande Atisha, who came through Tibet, and those times, you know, in Satya, it's just nothing in Westland. So George Bande Atisha 
came through um, area and uh, the, and the, those times in no, no vehicle, we always uh, riding yaks and horses. So the Choji Pandit Atisha has attended with him and he stopped in the Sakya and uh, started prostration. He dismounted from the horse and started prostration on the ground. And then he also said his attendants set up some uh, offerings. I'm going to do some puja here. And the attendants are saying, that, why? There's nothing here, just waste land. Only see the mountains and trees and graze, nothing. But he pointed, look at the, those, the gray earth um, mountain over there. There's uh, nine, S, nine letters of Tibetan letters, which is seven D, one Hung, and one Shi. And in the future, they're going to have uh, three emanations of the, um, uh, the Lord Jerisi, uh, Manjushri, and uh, Bajapani are going to be appeared here and going to have a big teachings, Buddha Dhamma teachings going to be here. That's why he's doing. So which the uh, attendant is he's telling. And then he also said there's true um, drone is gazing, eating grasses. Drone is a Tibetan called a Tibetan wild yak. And I have seen in the Tibet. Which, uh, nobody's belonged to, but the big wild yak, huge, much double bigger than yaks. And those two yak and those drones are gazing on the mountain. He said, this too is going to be protector and the Makalas emanation. So the, this one is monastery built here, they too are going to build. So this prophecy is just before Sajjung Wunyibo was born. So these are the last things happened. Of course, when he mm, receiving the Manjushri appeared and giving this four lines teaching, and at the same time the, from the bright light from Manjushri and the many light with the swords came to uh, receiving his body, which is the, the Manjushri sword of cutting the ignorance. It's very famous, this sword is not just regular sword. His name is sword, but Jamyang, Jambiyang, Radi we call. We don't, we don't really call the knife, but call the Radi, which is the spiritual knife. So he has, you know, received. And then all the time, he was just a very true emanation of the genius of Avalokiteshara and all three mentioned this. So anyway, so then uh, and he got give a teaching. He is the most fast teacher as well as the uh, um, call uh, miracle things and the lots of things in the help. His um, father's teacher was uh, um, Lama Nam Kaupa. I uh, was very famous. Lama Nam Kaupa even saw the vision Sajjung Wanyimba before Sajjung Wanyimba received. And he's also connected with how the, the Sajjung Wanyimba was going to be born and so forth. So when the Sajjung Wanyimba was born, like and I said, it's uh, 1092, in uh, near Sajjung, we still uh, we have a place, there's two man, they call it, they left uh, his, um, where he was born. And the one, as soon as he was born, Lama Nam Kopa took him in the baby in the front, and he saw that this is the emanation of the genius of Avalokiteshara. The Lama Nam Kopa is the teacher of the Kuen Kuen Chodjabo, and lived in Kau, which is if any of you, maybe some of you been and go to Sakya and, and take the, all the, um, what do you call, uh, Way to go. What do you call this? The, um, I mean, what to see, what to, where to, what do you call it? True, True but it is more than true. Yeah, anyway, it's the goal that will be really then. If somebody just go, like I remember oh, one I friend, took my friend who and come on the pilgrimage, 
and um, she's not Buddhist. But the, we went and I did the kora, 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 and she said, just go in one side, it's bad for you, go other way, you know, it's, if you don't know. And then what is come to this, the deity, she doesn't know anything about it. But I had to explain, this is this, this is this, how, and then she later she became, you know, well-knowing. Because that's why if you go just towards Tibet, especially the Satya, you will see lots of statues and books and, and pictures, that's all. But if you know the detail, each of these, who did who, who is he, and then will be really, really um, uh, benefit. And uh, this Satya, um, which you call um, history of Satya. So, and then, of course, Satya Ngonyambo um, passed away in 1158 or something like that. He passed away. And uh, um, he has many monasteries nearby Satya. One, one is a monastery he lived and studied uh, many years. And that monastery, he, he had built a statue. You know, the, some high lamas, they built a statue and uh, before they pass and they grew, give the consecration and then uh, became like themselves. And it, like we have the Pamasambhava statue here. And this statue is Pamasambhava when he was alive. He had built statue and did a consecration. And later they call uh, Ngandrama, which is like myself. So the Sajjan Gunyimbo also built a statue in the uh, Changamri, I think, monastery had built. And then uh, all the monks, lamas are gathering and give a um, consecration. And so the, uh, they went during the consecration, lots of steam came in the statue's head. So that shows the blessing went and there in. So this statue is very famous, became later. And um, so when Sajjan Munyebo, um, after he passed, and Satya Monastery is the main monastery, and they want to bring this statue back to Satya. So um, the, those times we don't have a, maybe wagon, I don't know, some carry by horse, so it's a few days away from Satya. So they uh, decide to bring Satyachu back to Satya, and uh, so then he said, uh, we have to check the auspicious uh, day. In the Tibetan, we do whatever we do, we always go calendar and check uh, astrology and check the time things. So they were checking, which is best day to bring to Satya the statue. So statue said, said it says, Pengen Rangyun Droa La Sase Tamoke, which means the, I'm just going home, or why I have to check the astrology? <laughs> <laughs> so then they didn't do check anyway. They brought back and very carefully brought in the Satya and uh, they call it such a sungjuma we have. And so then they arrived in the Satya, uh, it's, I don't think it damaged, but it's kind of a carry all this uh, road. So they put in a uh, statue and throne, and uh, all the other statues, you can see Satya, like our statues, very shiny and beautiful eyes and lots of gold and face. So they're going to put that, you know, you know makeup some gold and things. And Sajjan Gunyamba said again, Lagin Rangdo Lisha, which means leave me natural or old man, don't need to make a face. <laughs> so this statue is very famous. I have seen, Sadhurmachi have seen, and Sadhurmachi see. We are in Satya now. All the statues in the temple is very shiny, and this statue is kind of dark. And, you know, so anyway, this very famous uh, talking such a such a Nyimbo. So these things, are so many things, and such a Nyimbo, you know, appear. Uh, and so anyway, um, and he hold uh, many years, and uh, he passed away. 
all kind of medical things and uh, so and also during the during the session when you bo, um, after he studied and Pari Lotsawa um, after give back to uh, uh, teaching and they had built uh, a special a stupa. It's a main stupa in Satya, which is called um, Namja Chete, which is Namja is Victoria stupa, which is um, the deity is Ushnish Pajaya. And this is the main stu uh, stupa. And Pari Lotsawa worked very hard and brought lots of holy things from India, including many um, Buddhist relic and Bodhi tree and uh, many high lamas, uh, um, the precious things and statues, all kind of their objects and put this stupa. And when they did the stupa consecration, miracle things happened. And this stupa is, um, I'm, you can, you see, I'm an old woman. I've been in East Tibet teachings with all these high lamas. And they were talking, they said, and my um, great uncle, my uncle, um, and, and, and many lamas, they talk, they told me that I heard what they're talking and saying that in the long time in Tibet, there's no, um, you know, transportation like uh, today. So when I bring these messages, uh, of course, they are satyapa, so you have to get lots of teaching messages, all kinds of spiritual messages, writing back forth, reincarnation, tukus messages uh, from the satya teaching. So they send a message, usually take month, six weeks or two months each road, and they carry letters and to deliver and bring answer. So um, the lamas are talking that every time they received messages from uh, such a teaching like Mount Toda Wanshu, um, Dajan Rumache's father, and it says when they receive the letter, the messenger uh, person brings a message and letter and they put on ahead. And then the first thing they don't open and said, um, such a Namja Chetan is okay. Namja Chetan is exist. And they said, yes, Namja Chetan is fine. Oh, that's good. Now such a coin is okay. Then they open. So the, this is a stupa, it's very famous stupa. And this is the one, I think many of you received Avirambhachi's teaching. And when he talked about, a little short story about um, Murechi, about, and this stupa is, um, has a con strong connection with the uh, goddess of uh, Ushnishvajaya. And because they're teaching this, because it's main thing, the Sakya. And that's why it's, a, so it's teaching. And this stupa, and also we're going to have on the 23rd this month, um, Asanga Rinpoche is giving teaching and um, offerings, a uh, thousand offerings. This is Oshinishvajaya. Because they're doing this for helps for the Sakya teaching and world peace, and uh, maintain the current lineage and so. And when um, cultural revolution, and this stupa, uh, this stupa is in uh, North uh, Satya, and North Satya, you guys can see. And uh, North Satya is 108 temples, and uh, during the cultural revolution, destroyed. Very few left. So when uh, the destroyed all outside taking things and the stupa um, outside gold and uh, jewelries I think it, they took out and the stupa itself sunk on the ground I can see so they could cannot destroy the stupa but then later 1980s and arised back. When Sadhu Rumachi and I went in 1986, it's, uh, outside all the things are gone. But we climb in, the, they just kind of get, and the stupa itself is kind of, they said, arise. 
and still duzi, uh, which is water, still moist, and big, big stupa. And after, um, after that, then such a teacher, which they ordered to rebuild, and the stupa is now rebuilt stupa as the temple is. There's not many temples left in the north part of Sakya, but the giant Drupu is still there. Giant, you know, the uh, uh, giant Lama is still there. So the stupa is arised. So this is the, it's the wind because the, during the Sajin uh, Uwanyimbo had built this with Parilozawa. And so it was a very famous stupa. And so anyway, uh, the, the during the Sajin um, Uwanyimbo uh, is the main sort of not only founder but main sort of teaching carries and uh, it is one is most important and such a set and the five uh, uh, families such a with such a Nyimbo, his two sons Sonatsama Trapajansi and such a Panditan Chujapapa those five but this is the such a Nyimbo, as you all it's really important so anyway that's uh, short stories, I, but I think it, I was told only give 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, so and, then, uh, and then he passed away, it's 1158. And then we still have such a uh, statue, Sungjima, talking such in and such a, and the, the Many monasteries, temples, statues were destroyed during the Cultural Revolution, as you all know. But in, like I said, this Chude Chang, which is the northern part of Satya, um, there's only a few left, like the stupa, and some just, and then Shidok uh, Podang, there's a palace there. A few left, and other than that, mm, uh, you know, the gone. But they moved a lot of things back to Langan Chimbo, a great temple in the Langan Chimbo. So the Satya is really exist a lot of holy things. And during the Cultural Revolution, took to China a letter, uh, Rinpoche, and said it's, it's belong to back Satya. So the broad back such as so if you and I know you all young in the future is and some of you went and such a, so go there then see and then you kind of know what is what to see what is important things and there's a lots of uh, new statues in there too but mainly the old one is very important too. And, uh, and then this uh, place in the Satya has an all the holiest place. It's not very like city. You cannot get lots of things, a good hotel and things, but it's the holiest things you can see. You can feel it there. So uh, since um, 1959, I left the Satya, I went back three times. I'm very happy now. I don't know, I can go again, i do not sure. But this year I went. So many things that happened this. So I think that's just a short uh, teaching of uh, the great Sajin Gwenyimbo and we have here. And that's the one of the founder of the Satya. So I think that's that's probably it, right? Uh -huh. I was just
think I kind of walked around just a few things about also. That's the main teaching is going to be today, okay? So now the Tamshi Sebani, Dodani, Danam Panju, Jega, Namshi, Palan, Troba, Sipi, Solen, Troba, Troba, Sho, Jamba, Pawi, Cheta, Chemba, Gondo, Zombo, Teon, Tish, Teda, Gunji, Jesu, Dada, Tamshi, Radong, Sajin, Lama, Sonam, Zemota, Jizun, Traba, Sajia, Pentrita, Chuji, Jabo, Kopa, Rumbo, Jizun, Kumang, Ala, Sovan, De, Lula, Lula, Chugo, Sumji, Tashi, Sho, Mala, Dene, Sumji, Tashi, Sho, Semla, Lava, Sumji, Tashi, Lame, Gunjo, Sumji, Tashi, Sho, Tuchi, 